Okay, so we'd like to define a class call, uh, called date with three instance variables, this month, day, and year. All of them are, one of them month is string, and then the day is integer, and int for the year as well. So let's create that. Uh, okay, so I'm in this week, week 12, exercise one. So this is where this class is. I'm just going to add a new Java class that I'm going to call date. Now when you have when you have this uh, date I'm going to have a string I'm going to make everything private because that's now the the way to do things generally you would like to have all your instance variables to be private so this is the month and then I have private int day and then copy and paste about the year so now among these we'd like to have all these accessors imitators or getters and setters now I'm just going to do one of those just to make sure that we get things for example in this case if we'd like to have like to say the day uh, just I'd like to start with the day so I'll have to have public and then let's start with the setter the setters are void methods set set day and it takes an argument a parameter that is of the same data type of the instance variable day so in this case day I'm going to name it D this one and then later on I'm going to do something better now in this means that set day will take a number and then it will store it inside this variable now which means I can just do this this equal to whatever is in D right but I can do something much better than this because I'm not going to accept any number as a day because let's say that days should be 1 until 31 let's say if we're working on the Gregorian calendar so the max day is 31 so we cannot have a number of day that is 32 or 33 or something as well we cannot have 0 as a number of day or minus a negative number so we could put some kind of a condition before doing this what condition I'm going to put an if. If what? If D is bigger than zero and D is less than th 32. So if it's the case, I'm going to take this number and put it inside of the day. If it's not, I'm not going to be accepting it. Now, uh, that's for the day. If I'd like to have the same for the year, I'm just going to copy this and then let me rename this to Y. <coughs> now, the year is obviously positive. And it should be maybe, I don't know, I can put some kind of condition, but the maximum, it should be less than, I don't know, let's put some 3,000 as a max, I don't know. But it should not be like a, I don't know, you can maybe put more realistic one, like 2013, let's say. Something like the vision. And then here I'm just going to change this day into the year. Now I'm going to accept any positive year, so year one, year two, whatever. But then not above to this date. Or maybe I can put like this two hundred. Whatever. For me this is like a valid day. I mean nothing in the question asks you to do any of that, but I'm just telling you some things that you might think of. Uh, some kind of conditions. 
or if I don't want to put some kind of maximum, I could just put something like this. It needs to be just positive, greater than zero, or equal to zero. Why not? Because we might have the year zero. Why? Well, I don't know. Just saying. But what is not available, I was, uh, what is not acceptable, is to have a negative year. There's no year minus five, for example. Or is it? it might be. Anyways, but that's another story. But I'm just saying that we can put some kind of condition to make sure that we accept only the values that are uh, respecting some kind of condition. Now I'd like to show you one this one thing. What if I would like to name my parameter with the same name as the class variable, the instance variable? Now if I do this, now you notice now before I did this, you see this year is green like this one, which shows you that this year is the instance variable. Now and this one is the parameter that is only known here. Now if I rename this now to put it here, notice this one also has changed. Now it becomes year inside of year. This is not something that is going to distinguish this parameter from this instance variable. And the only way to distinguish between these is to put this dot and then the instance variable. So now it's clearly separating the year from the instance variable. From the year the parameter, from the year the instance variable. And that this is used for that. When you have some kind of confusion, you you would like to get or lift this ambiguity, you just put this dot to show which one is the instance variable. And the the getter the getter has the same data type as the instance variable doesn't take any parameter and it just returns the variable itself <coughs> and if I don't put a, a getter for a an instance variable for example for this I have only set year not get year which means I can change the year but I cannot see it B what I mean I cannot see it I cannot see it what I mean is is this for example if I put some kind of date the is equal to a new date. Now d dot, you can see that I have only set day, set year, and only get day, which means I can set the day and set the year and see the see the day, but I cannot see the year. If I change the year, for example, to be something like this. Now, if I'd like to display, okay, what is the year? D dot, there is no get year, so I'm not going to be able to see what's inside the year because it was not the, the class was defined in a way that it doesn't allow you to see what's inside of it but it allows you to put something in it or I can do something opposite <coughs> I can for example in here I can have a get without a set for example get month public uh, string get month and this is going to return the month which means now this get this the month here. I can display the month, but I cannot change it. So d dot, I can get month, but I cannot change it. Well, how comes? Well, I'm just changing what's possible. In this case, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but this is something that is going to be possible. And next week, inshallah, we're going to be doing things that will make this make more sense, have more sense, inshallah. When we're going to be talking about constructors, and this is the main part. So now for now I'm going just to create a set and get for each one of them. However, I don't want to do this manually. I'd like to show you that NetBeans is going to help you generate those. Of course, it's not going to help you put these conditions, but it will help you at least generate all of these. So I'm going to remove all those just to show you what is going to happen. <coughs> and then once you have defined your instance variables, there's something here, source insert code this is something very useful because it allows you to generate a lot of code for you so and when you do that it's also the uh, shortcut is alt insert which means if you're here and press alt insert it's going to show you that so there's a lot of different things 
you can have constructor, logger, etc. We, we're going to see this next week, inshallah. But for these ones, you can have only the getter or setter <coughs> or both of them. <coughs> and this is mainly what we're going to be using. So this, this is the getter and setter that we'd like to be using. So which means here, I just would like to ask NetBeans to generate some getters and setters. And now you see now this day, uh, sorry, this date, it shows me this is the class date, and these are the instance variables. Now if I select them, that means I want getters and setters for each one of them. So each one of them is going to have a get and a set. Get day, set day. And if I, this is encapsulate field, this encapsulate field means that if these were not private, it will also put them private. That's what this encapsulate field means. Just put them private. <coughs> but I don't need to put that because they are already private. If I'd like you, to, if you'd like to see this, for example, if some of them were having nothing or having public. Now, if I just alt insert again and getters and setters and select them all. And they'll click encapsulate fields. So what is going to happen? It's going to generate, but notice that all of them now become private, regardless of what was there before. But now check this. <coughs> I have the getter day, and I have the set day. As you see, it just prepared the parameter, and it puts it here. Of course, I'm, it's not checking that it's respecting some kind of rule. That's your job. But at least you have the structure. That means prepares everything for you. You have the day, you have the month, get month, set month, get year, set year. Now, s this is something helpful because you don't have to spend a lot of time typing everything. But you need to understand basically what this is doing. Now, if I'd like to set the day now and put some kind of condition, I'm going to surround this with an if. And then put like this day should be greater than zero and day should be less than 32 as we said and here for the month well the month is a text so there's nothing I can check maybe if it's one of the months I can see s I can say something like <coughs> <coughs> okay if I'd like to check the month I have to put some if for example the month is equals because you remember when I would like to check if the two texts are equal, I'm going to have to use this equals. I cannot just push double equal sign. January. But what if someone is just make put a capital J or lowercase? So there's another equal, you remember? There's another equal. There's equals and there's equals. Ignore case. You remember the difference between the two? This one compares exactly if a capital J is put and it's another one is lowercase j, these are going to not to be equal. But if the ignore case equals ignore case is used, it's not going to make a difference between the lowercase and capital letter. In, in this means if I do this January, for example. Now if someone enters January or January, they're going to be the same. They're going to be exactly the same. So, or, or someone put everything capital. It's going to be the same. So I can say something like this. If the month is equal to January or <coughs> the month is equal to February, etc. This I mean, I can put all the 12 there. That's one way to do that. But another way to do that is maybe more clever. This one is straightforward. We don't have to think too much. Another one is to do this. I'm creating a, an array of months. And I'm going to put all these uh, January, February, March, April. May, June. So I'm going to put all of them in July and then September, October, November, 
and December. So this is a one dimensional array that has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Something is missing. I'm sorry? August, yes. I skipped August. <coughs> so now in this case, what I'd like to do, if the user gives me something, I just would like to see if this is one here. So now instead of me doing this whole thing, I'm going to see. Remember if I'd like to find if, an, if uh, something is available in an array? So I'm going to say found is equal to false. And then I'm having a loop that is going to start from zero until this months dot length. And if <coughs> the months dot i, which is like one of these, is equals ignore case, the month that was given to me as a parameter, then found is equal to true. And I need to break, don't need to keep going. So this way, what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to see if this month is one of them. If it's one of them, I'm going to, well, I don't need this thing. I just put it and then get out. If it's not one of them, I'm not going to do anything, which means if I put a, num an, I mean an, a name of a month that doesn't exist in this list, I'm not going to put anything in here. <coughs> So if I found a month among these, I'm going to set it and get out. I don't need this boolean for I'll just show it to you that this is the type of algorithm that we use to find some if something is available in an array. Now if I look if this is available, I'm going to find it. Let maybe to to have this uh, month's list. So it will be clear that you can see that this is the list and this is the month that was given as a parameter, as an argument. Now sometimes I'm using two, two terms to refer to this, the argument and the parameter. The parameter is the variable. The argument is the value that goes inside the variable. Parameter is the variable inside this method here, uh, in between the parentheses of the method. And the argument is the value that goes here. <coughs> and here I can put also something about the year. So if like the year is greater than zero, let's say I'm going to put that in the year. So now I have the setters and getters. Set the month and get the month and just return it. And uh, yeah. So now if I'd like to try this and see if it's working, but before that, let me just finish this one because I have this right output just to print the details of the date, which is the day, month and something. So let me write an output. So this is going to be uh, public void write output. Now this write output is just going to display the day. Uh, I mean day plus month plus year. But I don't want this to be like that because I'd like to put some kind of separation between them. So I'm going to put some kind of like this. So I'm going to have day or maybe slash month and then year. I don't know. Or maybe just put a space. So it's up to you. You decide whatever you want. And now if I go back here, and I'm going to have this D dot, now I'm going to see that they are set, have three setters, I can set the day to be like, if I put like this number, now nothing is going to be changed, so the day is going to be like uh, some kind of a weird number. But let's, if I put now this 12, I'm going to put like normal dates and then uh, set month, and this is uh, November, and set year to be 2018 for example and then if i do this d dot uh, write 
output I'm going to see that it is going to display 12 November 2018 now what is going to happen if I do something like this if I run now what should I see I'm sorry error error that's one of the suggestions anything else just month and year right we're not going to be able to see the day well no we will why this happened now if I'm doing this right that means I'm here get day I said day this condition is going to be false because one two three is greater than this so it's going to be false so I, I'm not going to put anything inside this day but what was inside of it by default all primitive data types have zero and all non primitive data types have null so if I'm not able to put anything inside the instance variable day that means it will keep whatever was in the, his, its initial value and the, in the default value is going to be zero for the this and for the month if I do something similar like I put some month that doesn't exist so it's going to be null because I'm not going to be putting any, I'm not going to be putting anything inside this month this will never be true and this will never going to happen which means the old value that was there is the default value the null so if I run this thing I'm going to see 0 null 2018 if I don't want this to happen if I don't want this to happen I need to do something else but for example I put an else here so if this is not true I'm going to the day I'm going to make it for example to be 1 something like that and here what I can do I can just put a question if the mm, I mean the this month is equal to null because null is like a value I can say this month is equal to I don't know by default I want it to be January for example so if this is null that means the month that was given to me is not in the list this is going to be null so if it's null just change it put this in some kind this becomes like a default value this is my default value and same thing for the year I can put another else so if nothing was given to me that makes sense I'm going to make 2018 like the default year for example now if someone gives me like this and this and maybe even this mine are minus 18 what is going to happen the, I'm going to see this date as like the default so this is a small review about those setters and getters the main thing is a setter or a mutator it allows you to change the instance variable so you decide how we want it to be changed and the getter or the accessor is going to only allow you to retrieve it we have not used any getter here as you can see but I can <coughs> have something display like uh, d.get whatever I would like to get get the month for example so again after doing this I'm going to display the month and go back to the line so this is going to be this is just the month I can use the get to, to have access to the information or if I don't want to this to be happening if I want I don't want anyone to access only the day or the month of the year I just want them to if they want to see they can change the day they change the month change the year but they if they want to see they can see everything the whole date so what I need to do just remove those ones now I'm just removing all the gets which means now my class you can see the date by just using write output you can change each one of them 
But then if you'd like to see the day, well, you have to see the whole thing. But anyway, so but that's not generally what you would like to be. When you design a class, you want it to be flexible. So the user of your class is going to be happy and he can do whatever he wants. So generally, would like to give him more options, not restrain him from things uselessly. I don't know if it's a word, uselessly. That's I'm just invi inventing things. Anyways, so uh, that's uh, pretty much it.